uh, every or you know what tonight we're talking about how you can accept crypto donations for your nonprofit I'm so excited to hear more about it Tina I'm gonna read a little bit about your bio because I think they need to know who you are uh, again as I said she is the um, co-founder of every org it's a nonprofit organization excuse me it let me back up because see I told you I was excited so let me <laughs> stop. let me stop a nonprofit for nonprofits building an accessible giving infrastructure to help every person and organization use technology for good kind of like what we do at TechSoup she holds a BS in computer science from Stanford University so you know she's smart that's that that's a tough school before switching over to the nonprofit operations she worked as a software engineer I told you she was smart she built scalable technology on the blockchain project wow oh my God. I'm gonna let you can you tell us about that I'm just gonna stop right now because you work with snapchat right I want, yeah. I want to hear about this I want to hear about that as well so welcome Tina thank you for being here with us today yeah thank you for having me um I guess well we're here to talk more about cryptocurrency so I'm not really sure what what you want to share <laughs> we're gonna talk about everything cryptocurrency is first <laughs> Got it. Yeah, um, I previously worked on some blockchain projects with my co-founders. Um, we wanted to bring blockchain technology to the nonprofit sector. Um, but as we talked to more nonprofits and donors of what their current most press pressing challenges were, we found that a lot of people um, were struggling with adopting technology. So rather than um, kind of figuring out how to apply blockchain to nonprofits, we try to take the problem as a whole for the sector and how to make adopting new technology not so burdensome. Um, so today we are here to talk about how to accept cryptocurrency donations. And there are a lot of different ways and I wanted to make sure that people are equipped if someone is knocking on your door asking for uh, a way to donate crypto to your organization so that you don't turn them away. Um, and because I am working in operations right now, but I do have a technology background, I'm hoping that I could bridge both the technical aspects for you to the real life implications uh, for your organization. So let's dive right into it. Um, the answers that you'll get out of this webinar are one, why should nonprofits care about crypto? I just want to set the ground and make sure that um, you understand like what the state of crypto philanthropy is today to a brief high level overview of what is cryptocurrency. And um, don't shy away from this. You don't have to know all the nitty gritty technical details. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email them to me or ask in the chat box and we'll discuss it. Three, which nonprofits can benefit from cryptocurrency and spoiler alert, all of them. <laughs> and four, how can nonprofits accept cryptocurrency? And five, how can your nonprofit receive crypto support easily? So let's dive right into it. Why should nonprofits care about crypto? So today in the US, 21 million or 14% of adults own crypto. And this is a very recent study by Fidelity Charitable. They found that the crypto in, uh, owners are very, very charitable. Nearly half have donated $1,000 or more to charity in 2020 versus one third of all investors. And this is a study by Fidelity Charitable. Um, and then the demographic information comes from the 2021 State of Crypto report by Gemini. And they found that other than the 14%, 66% of US adults are crypto curious, meaning that they are interested in purchasing some crypto for investment purposes within the next year. Um, the majority, vast majority are 25 to 44 years old. So especially if your nonprofit has millennial donors, this might be something that you want to explore. And it is a number that's growing every single year uh, with 26% of crypto holders being new since last year. 
And crypto is being donated as an increasing amount. Um, every year, there's hundreds of millions. And in 2021, over 1 billion has already been donated, um, mostly thanks to some of the bigger donors. And we know that a lot of millionaires and billionaires have been created through cryptocurrency wealth. It's becoming more and more relevant and nonprofits can't um, lose out on uh, who can't a SEV crypto support may be losing out on very important support, especially because these donors are looking for ways to um, donate their newly found wealth in tax advantaged ways. So crypto, similar to stock donations, um, in that donating crypto is not a taxable event and uh, therefore the donors might be um, able to write off like uh, a lot more than they would have otherwise and they don't have to realize the capital gains. So there are many tax advantages uh, that are possible by donating crypto um, versus just donating in cash or if the crypto donor were to sell the crypto first and then to donate uh, back in the cash that they have netted. So in a nutshell, more and more people are donating crypto every year and there are a lot of cool projects that are donating crypto as well. Um, yeah, and I know that there might be a lot of questions re regarding that and I'm happy to answer them afterwards. And the second thing is um, which nonprofits can benefit from cryptocurrency? So you might be thinking, okay, crypto sounds good and all, but my organization has five people. My development team is just me and we don't have the time to learn about this. That's totally fair enough and you're not alone. And in fact, traditionally, only a small number, around 2% of nonprofits have accepted crypto, and they have been mainly large organizations such as the Red Cross and United Way. And that's because it's been a huge process to set up traditionally, both in terms of the technology involved and the internal processes to develop. But now with the good news in 2021, your nonprofit does not have to be technical to benefit from crypto, and you don't need a large development team. Um, as Aretha mentioned, I am with every.org and today over 1 million plus nonprofits can already accept crypto support with every.org. There are of course many, many ways of accepting crypto donations and there are different impl implications with each method, which I will cover shortly. Um, but before diving into all of these details that might be overwhelming, I just wanted to share that there is an easy way first, uh, which is every.org and it's completely free for nonprofits to use Every.org itself does not take any cut of the donations. Um, and in a nutshell, similar to a donor advice fund, Every.org enables crypto donations for any 501c3 public charity in the US in good standing with the IRS. What this means in practice is that both small and large nonprofits can already benefit from crypto without doing any extra work. Um, and then a small example of the usage of every.org is with this um, charity group called Karma Coin. They are themselves a cryptocurrency and a part of their transactions go back to charity. And they started back in um, April by donating to various organizations. And they first initially started supporting larger crypto enabled organizations like No Kid Hungry and Fred Hutch who have revenues of millions to hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, but using every.org, they started to support smaller organizations which, with smaller revenue sizes, including Working Dogs for Vets with around a 300K annual revenue and Joyride Cars with around a 100K revenue per year. Um, a quick quote from their founder, David Butcher, is that, there's a lot of different platforms out there that make onboarding difficult. Um, however, there are also easier ways. So as you are exploring different platforms, you could uh, find different onboarding requirements for um, accepting crypto support. And I'll go over them in a bit, but before moving on to that, I think it is best to go over a little bit about what exactly is cryptocurrency. And um, I just wanna say that this is going to be a fairly high level introduction, but feel free to ask any questions at the end. And I also wanna say that 
you don't have to be intimidated by cryptocurrency. You could kind of think of it as another asset class that your organization can receive support in. So um, I think it's best explained in terms of, in contrast to fiat money. So fiat money or traditional money, such as the US dollar is issued by the government. It's governed and regulated by a central bank. And if say Amy wants to send money to Bob um, in a different state, then they have to go through a bank that records that transaction on their ledger and then sends it to Bob's bank. And then because both Amy's bank and Bob's bank are regulated by the central bank and are trusted parties, then everyone agrees that Amy has now 50 less dollars and Bob has 50 more dollars. And this typically takes about three to five business days. On the other side, we have crypto and cryptocurrency is generated by code. Um, it is maintained by a decentralized network of computers um, and each computer has a full copy of that ledger. And it makes it very difficult through different consensus algorithms for any malicious party to tamper with the entire network. So, Trust is maintained in this decentralized manner. So this removes the necessity of a central bank or a central trusted third party. Um, and therefore, when a, uh, Amy wants to send money to Bob in another state, there is no intermediary required for transactions. Um, instead, the cryptocurrency uses uh, cryptography to make sure that the tr trust is there. So you may have heard of many, many different types of cryptocurrencies that exist out there, um, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, there's Tether, Binance, there's so many, Dogecoin. Um, today, there's thousands and thousands of uh, cryptocurrencies, and they're often also referred to as coins. Um, and there is actually a high liquidity of most of these coins through exchanges like Coinbase or Binance um, or Gemini. So these exchanges make it really easy for you to sell and buy cryptocurrency um, for fiat currency. So similar to um, stocks, they, they are easy to uh, sell and buy. So, that was like a very quick high level overview, but happy to answer any questions or deep dive into anything about cryptocurrencies like consensus algorithms or whatever you want um, after at the end. And the main question that you all are here for is how can nonprofits accept cryptocurrency donations? And I wanna cover a few different methodologies and the differences between them. These third parties help make accepting crypto easier and it's getting easier every single year that cryptocurrencies are around. Um, and as US regulators and other regulators are trying to figure out cryptocurrency, there are already third parties that are working with those regulators to help make nonprofit donations easier. Um, so the first option is your own crypto wallet, which is the most for the most technically savvy organizations. Uh, the second option is through a crypto brokerage and they usually offer a checkout experience for merchants and nonprofits alike, like Coinbase and Gemini. So um, I'll go through the differences right after this um, slide, but the third option is an intermediary payments processor like the Giving Block or InGiven, and um, they focus specifically on nonprofits. So they help with receiving, uh, they help with um, some of the technical aspects such as auto converting uh, crypto donations into cash. And then last but not least, there's an intermediary 501c3. So um, every.org is one of those and donor advised funds like Fidelity Charitable are also another. So these intermediary 501c3s accept the crypto donations, convert them into cash so that your organization receives cash and doesn't have to worry about any of the legal or accounting aspects around cryptocurrency. So 
between these, there's a lot of different risks that go into play depending on the method that you use to accept cryptocurrency. I would say the most risky is your own crypto wallet because you're kind of managing all of the security controls. Um, you have to make sure that you're not losing your passcodes, um, which is also called a seed phrase. Um, millions of dollars have been lost in Bitcoin across the years from people losing their passwords. So this is the most risky um, by far. And there is not much help in terms of um, recording transactions, like pulling reports, et cetera. So I would recommend using a third party intermediary um, and the sort of like most do it yourself option would be using a crypto brokerage um, and they help with things like remembering your passphrase. So it depends on which one you choose, but it also makes it really easy for you to liquidate the cryptocurrency into cash. Um, so two of the most popular are Coinbase and Gemini. And even among the crypto brokerages, there are different and varying levels of um, comfort or kind of how conservative they are with the coins that they choose to support. The third is with the intermediary payments processor. So they help you with all the transactions, make, making sure that um, things are liquidated very quickly so that you're not exposing yourself to the financial risks. Um, cryptocurrency is very volatile. So you want to minimize the amount of time that you're holding cryptocurrency in most cases. So these intermediary payments processor help handle those as well as the transactional aspects of creating a wallet, sending, um, managing the donations that are given to your organization and also recognizing those. And last but not least, the least risky would be an intermediate 501c3. Because your nonprofit doesn't have to touch the crypto, you are not exposing your organization to any additional risk than you would with, uh, say, like Facebook fundraisers because um, a lot of these third-party 501c3 platforms uh, use the structure of DAFs or similar, and the donation is recognized by the 501c3, and then um, the donor um, can easily donate to them, and then your nonprofit doesn't have to worry about any of the accounting and other nuances around crypto donations. Um, I know that some chats are coming through. Let's see. How do we avoid regulatory authority? Regulatory authorities saying you converted to fiat currency too soon or too late. Um, I think most regulatory authorities won't uh, have an opinion either way. Um, so similar to stocks, if a donor holds on to a crypto asset for over a year, then they have to pay long-term capital gains tax. Um, if a donor holds on to it less, less than a year and then sells it, then it's short-term. Um, the nonprofit doesn't have to handle any of that, but the donor may be able to benefit from, um, from different tax advantages if they donate long-term versus short-term. Um, but yeah, it's a good point with risks and different sort of considerations that you should make, especially if you are taking the cryptocurrency donation directly to your organization to and taking control of the crypto into your wallet. Um, and so I wanted to go over some of these considerations uh, really quickly. So the number one concern is that cryptocurrency is volatile. Um, so it's been going up and down throughout the year. It's hit two trillion and then it lost uh, one trillion back to one trillion in May. And then now it's back to like 2.9 trillion. So it is highly volatile. So if your organization decides to take in cryptocurrency, then it is very important for you to have a policy on how long you are going to hold that cryptocurrency. And this could differ from coin to coin. There are certain coins that don't fluctuate as much called stable coins. Um, for instance, the USD coin is tethered to the value of the dollar. Um, whereas uh, 
I guess some of the meme coins that are coming out these days, like Dogecoin, typically have higher volatility. So um, you should consider auto selling, so auto converting as soon as you get the donation. But if you want to hold on to crypto as part of your asset class, it is something that you have to carefully consider. Um, what is the advantage to donors to donate in cryptocurrency? So the primary one is um, a tax advantage. Uh, so I think one thing to note is that the regulations are in flux. And also I am not a financial or legal advisor. So you should double check with your um, professional advisors before doing anything with cryptocurrency. Um, However, so the main thing is that uh, right now the IRS considers donations of cryptocurrency similarly to property. So um, it's similar to stocks in that donating cryptocurrency is not a taxable event. So uh, donors may be able to claim the full fair market value of the donation, but also not have to pay the capital gains tax. So it depends on how long they've held it um, and various things. So they, they should also consult their tax advisor, but there is a, a potential huge tax advantage with donating crypto over selling it and then donating the proceeds in cash. Um, another thing to highlight about regulations is that the SEC and regulators are still trying to decide um, how to deal with cryptocurrency. And even among institutions and brokerages, there are varying levels of uh, risk tolerance. So doing some research around um, the different organizations that you are using is very important. Um, and then another thing, and this is primarily for your accounting team, it is a new area and things are not super set in stone. And the FASB, the Financial uh, Accounting Board, has yet to directly address cryptocurrency in their practices, but general guidance from um, the major accounting firms say to treat it as intangible property. So it's kind of weird in that um, you're not supposed to be booking uh, unrealized gains month to month. Uh, with cryptocurrency. So it's unlike an investment in that case. So that's all to say that there are very strange things with uh, um, accounting regarding cryptocurrency. And this is something that your accountants should be clear on if they are to accept cryptocurrency directly into the organization. And there are some reporting requirements with the IRS. Um, so similar to stock donations, written acknowledgements in, uh, for an in-kind donation of a non-cash contribution. So recognizing the quantity and the symbol, but not putting a dollar value. Um, if you are to use a third party intermediary 501c3, then they usually do all of this tax receding for you, including every.org. Um, to report it in your 990 Schedule M, to file the 8282 forms when you sell the crypto, and then also to sign form 8283 for non-cash charitable contributions if the donor uh, wants to claim it on their tax taxes. Um, and then last but not least, a reminder to review your policies, uh, consider any gift acceptance policy and internal security and financial controls. Um, and it's extremely difficult to recover cryptocurrency that has already been sent out than it is for cash because of the lack of central regulators. So keeping all that, all that in mind, um, I think it is very important for you to have the proper policies in place. Um, and you might be thinking by now, like this is super cool, but that's a lot of risks and considerations. Um, is this one more thing that I'll have to track? And, you know, crypto is becoming more of a mainstream topic um, and it is very important for organizations to understand how donors might want to support their organization in the future. So I want to introduce you to the nonprofit that I'm part of called Every.org and our whole goal is to help nonprofits like yours. 
So every.org itself is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are building an accessible giving infrastructure to help every person and organization use technology for good. Um, this means making technology like crypto donations free so that nonprofits can access it, no matter your size or budget. Um, we hope to be a complement to your existing fundraising strategy, and not only for crypto, but also things like stocks and mutual funds. Um, and just a little bit about us, um, we launched in March 2020, but we've already helped over 1,800 nonprofits collectively raise over $5.5 million in funding, with over 40% of that being from recurring donations. So we hope to grow that amount. and. Surprisingly, crypto has been a huge part of that. And it's our largest, I think our second largest um, asset. So if you look at every.org slash metrics, you could see all of our public metrics. Um, and we've raised over $1.2 million in crypto donations since launching the product this year. Um, and I wanted to do a quick demo on how easy it is to get started with every.org today. Um, and as I mentioned, this is only one of the different ways that you could accept crypto support. It is the easiest way because if you're a 501c3 public charity, you're already set up with this. Um, and if you have a crypto donor tomorrow, it's probably the easiest way to quickly onboard and get that donor uh, donating crypto ASAP. Um, if you go to every.org slash crypto today, you could book a 20 minute call with our team, um, it's free. If, if you wanna just like discuss crypto support, if your nonprofit could be a fit. But if you scroll down here, you could click on this create link or button, search your nonprofit by name or EIN. So let's say I was Florida Rescue Farm. And this is the donate crypto button that you could use um, to, add a donate button to your website. You could copy and paste this code or email the instructions to your tech person, or you could share a link to uh, your donors via email or social media. Um, and clicking on this allows the donors to quickly donate cryptocurrency. Um, in this case, I could just do a test. And we use Coinbase in the back end um, to quickly process and convert the cryptocurrency to cash. But um, any donor can scan their QR code or use the hash address to send the crypto to this address. And that's it. Like, that's all they need to do. Your organization will receive cash at the end of the day. We will convert it automatically to crypto, uh, cash acknowledge the donation, add a custom thank you message if you want, and then send you the cash. So how it works on the back end, if you don't do anything today, um, a donor might come to every.org, click on this donate crypto button. They'll use Coinbase to send the Bitcoin or Ethereum, in this case, this is Bitcoin. And then the Bitcoin will get sent to every.org. Every.org will exchange it for a 1% brokerage fee. Um, also, this brokerage fee is going, coming from Coinbase. It's not coming from every.org. And how we deliver the money to your nonprofit is um, dependent on whether you had added your bank info to every.org. If you have, then the direct deposit is free, um, happens weekly or upon request. And then if you don't, then we send the money through Network for Good and they process donations for Facebook fundraisers as well as Amazon Smile, et cetera. Um, and then typically they charge a 2.25% disbursement fee, but right now we are covering the dis disbursement fee um, part of our programs because we want nonprofits to be able to easily accept cryptocurrency and adopt new technology like this. So in a nutshell, um, the fees for using every.org will be the 1% of the donation um, that's charged by Coinbase, no disbursement fees, and that's it. Um, so in a recap for all of those sort of considerations that I mentioned, with the volatility, every.org will sell and convert within one business day. 
regarding receipts, regulations, accounting, and reporting because your nonprofit receives cash and never touches crypto, your um, every dollar will be responsible for all of those aspects. Um, and the whole reason why we did this is because we realized that nonprofits have all of these operational challenges and um, regarding every single piece of technology that comes out, we wanted to create something that could function without um, the nonprofits having to do a lot or do that much. So I understand that how cryptocurrency is a very overwhelming topic. Um, and I think it is a really cool topic to delve into if you are interested. But if your nonprofit um, doesn't care too much about delving into the details, um, every .org is a good default solution that you can use. So that's it for me. I'm happy to make this into a discussion. Um, I saw that people trickled in. I'm sure like there might be a lot of questions regarding crypto and I'm happy to talk about whatever you want. We could go into specific cryptos. We, we could talk about NFTs, whatever you want. Um, and if you know of any other nonprofits that could benefit, um, feel free to email me at tina at every.org. Every That's it. Thank you so wow. much. That was amazing. Every question that I was thinking of, you answered it. Because I was going to say, Tina, so explain to me if I was a nonprofit and I wanted to accept crypto donation. You shared it in your presentation. You explained it. And then I heard you say something about it being an in-kind donation, but I was like, well, in-kind is non-monetary and you have to have value to it. But then when you mentioned that you all would take that crypto and you would you know, take it through every.org, then you would give money to the nonprofit. So that explained that. So that helped me a lot. So I'm going to open it up to anyone else who has a question. And I see my good friend, Kristen here. Hello, Kristen. Hello. How are you? Excellent. How are you? I'm so glad you're here because I know this is right up your alley. Yeah, we are actually starting uh, a, a 501 right now for some baller entrepreneurs, super successful serial entrepreneurs who are very deep in crypto. And um, so I was just, I had a meeting that just ran late. And so I, I, I didn't get the presentation, but I uh, hope to hope to catch, catch yeah. it later. I don't know if we can do that, but um, yeah, our the attorney firm that we're partnering with i i we we i own instantnonprofit.com so we start 501s and um the law firm with, that we're closely partnered with happens to have founded a major cryptocurrency oriented nonprofit so i am swimming in learning about this there's so much to it there is there is yeah, there's so much uh, cool stuff happening at the intersection of crypto and also blockchain and social impact. Um, yeah, yeah, there are so many cool applications. I'm really excited to see what they come up with. Definitely. Thank you. Um, thank you for your comment. Christian, anybody else have a question for Tina? Because I know if you're new to crypto, you might have, you know, lots yeah. of questions. Um, I saw Peter typed a question. Yeah. Um, can UK nonprofits use every.org? Do any do so now? So um, by default, every.org only supports 501c3 US uh, public charities. We do have a few United Kingdoms charities. Um, so how that would work is they would have to manually onboard and do what's called a equivalency determination, which is a somewhat long and cumbersome process. So unfortunately, um, most UK charities are not doing so. We are trying to figure out how we can find cool fiscal sponsor um, organizations who could help us reach multiple UK charities at a time rather than like going through this cumbersome legal process. Um, but to date, only Our World in Data and Core Econ are using every.org. And those are the two nonprofits uh, based in UK who are using every.org. Great question. Great question, Peter. Thank you for your question. Um, Dion, did you have a question? Yes. Good, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so. Tina, I just want to say thank you. The information is uh, so valuable, kind of as you know, the world becomes more and more of a digital society. So I just want to say thank you and appreciate uh, you, Ms. Simmons, for kind of putting this together. My question was in terms of the 
Um, I know every.org right now is, um, I know the way you mentioned it is converting the crypto donation um, directly into cash and then uh, continuing that transaction to the nonprofit. Do you guys have the capabilities now or the plans to um, make the transaction from crypto donation to uh, crypto donation to the nonprofit? Or is that not kind of what your, your plans are? Yeah, it's not in our plans. Um, we serve nonprofits who want to engage with crypto at a higher level. Um, we do definitely get questions about nonprofits who want to hold on to crypto. So I do think if you want to do that, um, the benefit, most of the benefits of every dollar kind of go away. Um, there are other third parties like the giving block and in given, they do charge a higher fee um, to hold on to the crypto over a long time. And um, if you if those fees are sort of out of your range, then you could use Coinbase Commerce. Um, I know that the life you can save uses Coinbase Commerce directly. You get your own wallet. It's managed um, custodially by Coinbase, which kind of eliminates a lot of the security risks. Um, the only thing is that the acknowledgement has to be done by your organization. Okay, awesome. Um, I think the only other question I had was um, in regards to, let me just see, I had to let, wrote a little note for it. Um, with every.org and some of the regulations, I know obviously, like you said, you're not a, an advisor, but just some, in your experience, um, how does some of those new regulations that are you know ever changing uh, because of you know things are so uh, you know they're so volatile not in terms of the price but just in terms of those regulations um, are do you guys have like a resource uh, log or like how do we get to frequently ask questions Is that somewhere just just on your website or what does that look like yeah in terms of regulations we're just keeping an eye out on um, we don't have our own sort of developed resources regarding that um, the main ones are, I, I guess like the IRS still hasn't changed their rules since they came out with their uh, crypto guidelines and they have a pretty nice like way of laying out all of their rules. Um, I would say that the 8282 form was not meant for crypto. There's like five lines <laughs> um, and a lot of crypto transactions, especially things like NFTs, there's like 50 lines. And so um, what we do is we automatically generate the 8282 forms and print them out and then mail them to the IRS. Um, but yeah, in a lot of cases, I do think like the regulations, we're just keeping an eye out on. Um, I know that Congress is still like figuring out regulations um, around it. A lot of the rules around nonprofits have not so far changed regarding cryptocurrency since the IRS kind of put out those guidelines. Um, and the one that we're waiting for is for the Financial Advisory Board to give the US GAAP accounting practices. Um, but we ourselves use nonprofit lawyers and nonprofit accountants who kind of keep us up to date regarding all of those practices. Um, and I, I do think a lot of the sort of like specialized professionals, they are kind of keeping an eye out on this. Um, well, we might kind of update people through a blog post as uh, things drastic drastically change. Um, but if you go to, here, I'll leave this like blog that every.org slash crypto, um, it, it kind of like, goes into more detail about all of the risks and considerations I highlighted today. Um, so yeah, at a high level, we're keeping an eye out on, we don't have too many resources about like the things that are changing day to day. Um, but yeah, if you want to ask us more questions about specific things, happy to chat over um, a call later too. Yeah, okay. can I ask you a specific? Yeah, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt, Dion. Um, so, so I was doing some studying, and and we're we're working with some people. I'm working with a leader who leads a crypto investor group of about 250 Bitcoin people who have done really well, and they're doing sustainable land projects all over the world. Um, my understanding is that the altcoins are being considered securities while the stable coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum are being considered commodities. 
I don't know how nonprofits handle commodities versus securities, but my understanding in general of securities, like if, if somebody wants to give stock to a nonprofit, is that they can give stock to the nonprofit and get the tax deduction for the appreciated price of the stock. So they mm -hmm. get a bigger tax deduction and they don't, so they bought it with the tax basis of the stock at its lower amount. And then they give it to the nonprofit and they get that full appreciated stock value. Is mm -hmm. that the same with, with crypto based on the fact that they've been, most of them have been declared securities? Yeah. Um, to my understanding, the IRS still considers all of them property. And because they're not on like a official stock exchange, um, they are not like valued in the same way. So the donor typically, if, it, if it's a valuation of over $5,000, they have to get an appraiser. Um, the the IRS guidelines around who is qualified to appraise cryptocurrency uh, is a very limited set of people because like, I think you're supposed to have years of formal education in the cryptocurrency, but who is a formally trained uh, appraiser of cryptocurrency? Yeah. And Bitcoin came about in 03, Ethereum, what, 2012? I mean- Yeah, so and, and the strange thing is that there are exchanges, they're just not recognized in the same way that stock exchanges are. Um, and so to my understanding, even the altcoins are treated the same. I know that a lot of exchanges are eyeing altcoins differently. And Bitcoin and Ethereum are actually not stable coins. And I know that regulators are talking a lot about stable coins. And the stable coins are things like Tether and USD coin that are staked to a stable value that right, is yeah, equivalent to fiat. Yeah. yeah, I misspoke. I misspoke. It, sorry it's about okay. That. But they do yeah. seem to be treating Bitcoin and Ethereum in a class of their own because they are recognized as having exchangeable value versus the altcoins, which are very subjective, which I would imagine are, is like art. Um, so all of them kind of fall under, like when you recognize a donation, uh, or when we recognize a donation right now, we just say the coin and the quantity. And we sell it for a certain value. So for the nonprofit, all we need to care about is like, what was the valuation to our best understanding? And we just go by whatever Coinbase said the valuation was when we received it and then when we sold it. So for the nonprofit's perspective, it's all the same, no matter which coin it was. I think for the donor's perspective, it might be different, um, but to, to what I've heard so far, Ethereum or like Solana, like there's no difference between all of those altcoins because um, they're all kind of treated in the similar way as like stock. So depending on how your, I guess, accountant advises that you <laughs> value those um, donations at, you might be able to deduct the full fair market value no matter what coin it was, even if it was an altcoin as long as there was like a distinct way of appraising for the value. Sure, sure. Awesome, thank you, appreciate it. But yeah, everything is in flux. I know that like we consulted like several different experts regarding um, crypto valuation and still there are a lot of gray areas. I'm just letting you know on the donor side, especially, um, but because I think the regulations are very, um, unclear even for donors oh, yeah. right now i i'm sure like before clear guidance like they'll kind of understand that like people were trying their best um yeah yeah i'm not I sure appreciate though that. The, there's so much to learn the only inter the only thing that interferes is sleep right now on <laughs> up on this stuff for sure well, those were great questions. You. Dion, you have, that was a great question to kick us off. Christian, great question. Jean, do you have any questions? Does anybody else have any questions? Question. Hi, hi Reed, so how are you? I came in late, so I guess I need to, I'm totally got to go back from the beginning. Okay, so all right. Get the concept, so totally. It's available to go back, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. We, this has been recorded and we will um, put this on TechSoup's website, uh, on their YouTube channel, excuse me, and those who registered, will get the replay. They always get the email of the replay because a lot of people, you know, life gets in the way. So um, Tina, this 
has been amazing. And we're definitely going to continue the conversation. Um, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for everybody who's been here. And before we leave, I want to ask if any other questions, because I know it was a lot to take in. Any other questions? No other questions? Well, Tina, do you want to say final words? Yeah, thank you everyone for being willing to dive into this topic. Um, I know that cryptocurrency is very intimidating in a lot of ways, um, but I wanna say that it doesn't have to be so intimidating. Um, and if you or your nonprofit wants to discuss cryptocurrency with us or want to see every.org and discuss more about whether we can be a fit for your organization, um, you can visit every.org slash crypto um, to book a 20 minute call with us. It has links to our FAQs, um, more details about how every.org itself works. Um, but yeah, I know that there are a lot of different ways of accepting cryptocurrency. We, we could also discuss all of those. So thank you so much. Um, really, really glad to be able to like discuss this with such a small group. Like, I, I think it's it's nicer because like it's more conversational, <laughs> like we were able to like riff on. And I'm sorry if I rambled about like, no, it was great. Topics. I get very excited. I love it. I love it. I love it. It was great. Thank you. So everybody, as you are taking care of the world and everybody else, make sure you take care of yourself and have a good night, everybody. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a good day. Take care. Good to see you, Risa. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.